This is a cup of hot cocoa. Nothing really significant looks like it's happening from this angle, but if we just change the lighting angle a little bit, we can suddenly see a magical world appear. A fine white mist is suddenly visible on the surface. It whisks back and forth by any small gusts of wind. It suddenly appears and then in a cascading pattern it disappears in jagged cracks. This mist will appear on tea, coffee, and really any hot drink. But what is it and why does it disappear in these weird streaking patterns that resemble the particle collisions that occur in a cloud chamber? Could it be that we're actually seeing the effects of cosmic rays in a cup of hot chocolate? In order to see this effect, I just put a scoop of pure hot cocoa in water, and then I heat it up to almost boiling in the microwave. You have to get the light angle coming in from a very shallow angle, and what we see is that the hot water is evaporating from the surface, and then condensing into tiny microscopic droplets that then fall back down to the surface. If you blow on it, you can see that it moves over the top and blows around kind of like a powder. But these aren't solid particles, they're microscopic water droplets. So it's very odd because you'd expect that they should just coalesce back into the main bulk liquid, but they don't. They just levitate on the surface for a while, but then suddenly they disappear in this fast cascading event that resembles cracks or slits. This phenomenon was first recorded in 1922 by a Japanese physicist in his essay A Cup of Hot Tea, where he mentions many fascinating phenomena in a simple cup of tea. So let's see if we can experiment and figure anything out about how these drops form and why they disappear. I'm going to try to see if the cascading events are from electric charges, radiation particles, or something else. But first I want to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. These last few years have been difficult for everyone, and one of the most important things you can do in times like this is to focus on your mental health. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service, and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via messaging, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist anytime and schedule a live session when it's convenient for you. And if your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge as well. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who's custom picked for you, more scheduling flexibility at a more affordable price. So get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash action lab, or you can click the link in the description. And thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to our experiment. When we look at slow motion of the cascade events, the drops suddenly disappear seemingly at once. But it's not instantaneous. The cascade moves at about one meter per second, which is about the capillary wave surface speed. So we can assume that there's some event that causes one drop to merge into the bulk liquid, then the wave front spreads out and swamps the other drops and they all coalesce together. But what's really weird is that it doesn't just travel out in a circle away from the first event. It moves in a straight line. And a lot of times, two cascading events will happen at the same time in different places. So is there something else going on here? What if there's some unseen event that's causing the drops to start coalescing? Well, some researchers have guessed that it might be cosmic rays starting the cascading event. Remember that we're continually bombarded by alpha, beta, and gamma radiation around us. You can see the path of these particles in something called a cloud chamber. So I have here my homemade cloud chamber, and if you just have drops of vapor of supersaturated alcohol, then a high-speed particle can bump into the air and ionize the path of air. This ionized air induces the alcohol to form liquid drops near the charged particles. So you can see a white mist in a cloud as it passes by. So is this what we're seeing here? Well, maybe. Let's see if we can get more cascading events to happen faster when I put a radiation source near it. The most radioactive thing I have in my house right now is a smoke detector. It has a americium in it. The americium emits alpha particles, but these are blocked by the plastic so they don't go far. This radiation detector only detects gamma radiation. But the reason it's going crazy isn't because the americium is emitting gamma radiation, but it's because of the daughter products of the americium decay that do emit gamma radiation. This was a little surprising for me to learn because I always assumed that it was just alpha radiation that's easily blocked by the plastic, but there really is gamma radiation coming off of smoke detectors as well. But it's not really at a dangerous level to hurt you. Now let's take the hot cocoa and hold it near the smoke detector. 
So it doesn't really look like anything's happening when I put the smoke detector near it. So we've increased the background radiation several times here, but nothing's happening. It doesn't look like we're seeing more cascading events. Now this could also mean that it does need alpha or beta radiation to hit it to cause a cascading event, but I'm not sure about that. But now let's see what happens if I bring an electric charge near. This is a Wimshurst machine. When I start spinning, it charges these rods here. So let's see what happens when I bring these charged rods near the hot cocoa. Whoa, it completely wipes out the whole mist and generates more water droplets in the air even. Look, when I just move it over the hot cocoa, it suddenly starts steaming more. That is so cool. I didn't really expect for the charged rod to make more steam around it and completely obliterate the mist on top of the water, but I should have expected it a little bit because when I was experimenting with my cloud chamber, I noticed that when I charged up a nail inside of it, it immediately made mist form all around. So the charged air is actually being a nucleation point for the supersaturated water around it so it can form these water droplets and mist around it. But it also wipes out the droplets on the surface. I can even get the same effect with a balloon that I just rubbed on my head. Or just a small plastic straw I rubbed on my head. All of the charges make the droplets disappear on the surface. Now this fits in well with research I have read about this where they thought that the droplets on the surface had an electric charge because they noticed that they were equally spaced out and they would normally only do that if they're charged and they're repelling each other so they want to space apart equally from each other. So when we introduce an external electric charge it pushes on the charged particles and can make them collide but it can also be disrupting their levitation on the surface. We don't exactly know why the drops levitate on top. It could be because there's steam continually coming off the surface holding the drops up. Or they're slightly charged opposite of the bulk liquid, so the static electricity makes them levitate. So when we bring the external charge near it, it disrupts the bulk charge and they can't repel anymore. But why do they disappear in these cracking patterns? Well, in looking at this a lot, I noticed that the cascade events frequently show up near the natural convection lines in the hot chocolate. The hot chocolate is continually cooling down as we're doing the experiment, so there's continual flow in the liquid due to natural convection. This causes convection cells to form that have a border. This is what you see on the sun and even in a boiling pot of water, where fluid on one side is moving up and the other is moving down. Near that border, there must be enough turbulence that this causes the drops to touch and have a coalescing pattern. So it seems that this isn't very much cosmic rays causing it, but a combination of electric charges interacting with the convection cells in the liquid. So what do you think? Why do you think the drops levitate and what causes these cascading patterns when they disappear? If you want to try to answer some of these questions, just take a look at your next cup of hot chocolate and see if you can see the fine mist on the surface. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you learned something. If you did and you haven't subscribed to my channel, remember to hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.